ようこそ、Welcome to Tokyo, one of the coolest cities in the world. We are your unofficial self appointed gay ambassadors, and we would like to take you around Tokyo and show you the top seven spots you should visit as a gay person. So come join us as we go around the city. Go, go, go! Yay! Yay! Go! <laughs> Alright, so we are at Ofuro no Osama. This is an Oimachi. It's a sento that has a variety of masks. It's kind of rumored to be the number one super sento for gays. It's known for having a variety of baths, and they add a lot of nutrients and minerals into the water that mimic onsen. There are also stone baths, which are also really popular. So it's definitely the place you want to go to if you want to have an onsen like experience and be surrounded by gays. Just like other onsen shisetsu or onsen resort that you see in Tokyo, usually they offer like a total package. There's a restaurant, you can relax there,、um, watch TVs, right? Do you remember? Is tattoo allowed over there? Tattoo is not allowed,、um, but I think if you have small tattoos and you can cover them up with bandages, you'll be okay. We know that there is another very popular onsen in Tokyo called Oedo Onsen. Many people probably already know it. But、sure. it's like a theme park experience, in my opinion. That、yeah. you dress up in like yukata and they have like a shoten guy instead of the onsen. But it's here, it's a little bit more the super sento experience. For usually Japanese people would go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we just got off from the Ganbang Yoku, the stone bath. Super hot. What was your name? It was nice. I like the one with the rocks better than because there's like a slab、mm -hmm. as well. And like maybe that's good for your back, but like with the rocks, they kind of like go all up, like they hug your body. It's like a like, massage. It's、yeah. nice, yeah.、Um, it's actually plus 800 yen per person here.、Right? Yeah, so you have to be careful that when you come in, this isn't included in the original price. You have to pay the extra one. Um, I think it's a good way to, if you believe, like detoxing,、yeah. right? And you, we sweat a lot. Like I usually don't sweat much, but like especially winter. Yeah. So it's good. Give it a shot. Give I mean, shot. if you're gonna come all the way out here and do it, I think you should go the whole way. Get the whole pa package, right? Yeah. But you like it, right? I enjoyed it. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Oh, and you can charge your phone. It's you... like another plus, <laughs> which is only available when you get in the section. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And also, we have this like resting area which we showed you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Up to two people, it says. <laughs> okay, guys, so we finished Ofuro, or the Japanese bath. And we're here at this vending machine right now, and we're gonna get some milk、so、to drink. Very, very common、uh, in Japan for people to get milk or coffee、um, at the end of a、uh, Sento or Ofuro experience. So that's、yeah. what we're gonna do. So, you get this key when you come in, and this is what's used throughout the whole building to buy things that you want. You can get drinks, you can get food. This is what we use. Yeah, so we're gonna get it. And then, when we're finished with it, we're gonna put it here. Milk for strong b o n e s So, I wanted to actually touch upon Shibuya because I think people are going to be coming here when they visit Tokyo.、Um, obviously, it's not as famous as other parts in Tokyo for bars and stuff like that, but I do think that there are some gay things to do. 
Yes, I fully agree. There are many things you can do in Shibuya. For example, like shopping, my favorite thing to do. On the fifth floor of Cebu Shibuya, there is a shop called Toot. It is a very popular Japanese underwear brand. Although it is a little bit more expensive than regular underwear, so it's around $50, I believe. Um, but it's a great souvenir for your boyfriend. Speaking of souvenirs, uh, you're going to be probably at Don Quixote. So if you go here to the fifth floor, you can actually find like a tanga section. Mm, there are so many tangas here. Uh, have you tried them before? I did. Well, we talked about it. What <laughs> Another cool thing about Donkey is that they have an all-gender bathroom. Shibuya is very progressive. Um, they offer same-sex partnership, and also they host Rimu Pride every single year. So the next stop on our list is Parco. Parco was actually redone recently. Uh, yeah, I went with my ex-boyfriend, so fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there are actually a lot of fun things to do here. After it was renewed, a lot of new stores popped in, like Condomania for one. The original store was actually in Harajuku, but it's since moved, and then when it moved, they opened up a whole bunch of other stores. One of them is here. So these Japanese design condoms are definitely good for souvenirs. They're a very affordable and come in different shape and color. It's super cute. And then not only that, they have like lube and stuff as well. Wait, why do you want to pay for lube when you can just use your spit? Oh my god, no, we've gone over this. Okay, moving on. Look at the Happy Pride condom. It's fun. It's cute. Yeah, it's very cute. Well, and okay, you're going to be down this basement. I figure you should stop by Campy Bar. What is a Campy Bar? Campy Bar is actually a bar in Shinjuku ni Chome. <gasps> by, you know, the drag queen one we always pass? They opened up a bar here as well. Wow, so you can also have a very gay experience in the newly built park hall. Exactly. Park, right? yeah. So the only thing is that it operates under a different bar in the day and it becomes Campy at night. And then definitely check out the roof when you're here as well, just because it's just, it's beautiful. I can't wait for Corona to be over and then like grabbing a beer or something at a convenience store and then coming up here and drinking. It's very beautiful, yeah. <laughs> you don't care at all. No, I do, it's really beautiful. The, the, yeah, the sky is blue, everything is fancy, and there's like little, like, sky garden. <laughs> God, you don't care at all. <laughs> So I think we're actually now shifting gears a little bit. Now we're in a place that focuses on boys' love. Isn't it for women? <laughs> yeah, so it's mainly geared for women, but the reason why I wanted to include it is just because, I mean, it's boy-on-boy -boy action. So where we are is Otome Road, and that's sort of the, the strip in Ikebukuro that's uh, very famous for boys' love. That's so interesting. They call it Otome Road because Otome is like you innocent woman, right? You're, made, <laughs> because, you're a maiden. You're a maiden. <laughs> you're a maiden, but you, the things you watch, you read, or you watch is not that innocent. Not that innocent. <laughs> so once you get to Ikebukuro, you want to head towards Sunshine City. The reason why it's important to go there is because Otome Road is actually just across the way from it. Otome Road, Sunshine City. So close. Do a BL code pose. <laughs> there is no BL pose. What's a BL pose? <laughs> Hi, it's Tokyo Top. Top. <laughs> Sunshine City is fun as well because it has the Pokemon Center, mm -hmm. right? So people are probably going to be there anyways, and they might not know that literally like a block away is like Boys Love Paradise. That's true. Actually, I am a huge BL fan as well. Um, I watched lots of BL when I was younger, but I now realize that BL is totally different from game, you know, reality. Um, so those like bottom and top like rows and also characteristics, um, you know, we always think like um, the bottom guys is feminine, the top guy is masculine, but in real life it's not always the case. Well, see, you can actually see here when we're in these stores that they say uke 
So like this with Arashi or something, they'll have like Nino, who's like a famous Arashi guy, and they'll have stories written about him from a bottom perspective and then some from a top perspective. So it's really interesting how you can like switch that around. Do they have like BL for Pokemon? Uh, no, I saw, I saw Final Fantasy, which was interesting. I saw Kingdom Hearts. Um, what else? Oh, and we saw Attack on Titan. Do you remember we saw I that? See. Yeah, and Eden was like, there were so many stories about him being a bottom. With different people, right? With different people, okay. yeah, yeah. It's something called Dojinshi in Japanese, right? Yeah. Dojinshi. Yeah. So if you're into BL voice love, definitely come visit uh, Ikebukuro to check that out. I mean, as you can see, it's just like rows and rows and rows of Dojinshi. So when you're in Ikebukuro, you're probably going to see a lot of owls. And that's because owls are called Fukuro and they are good luck. So it's actually all around Ikebukuro. You're gonna see lots of shops. And if you are in the station, you might actually run into Ikebukuro, which is a cute little statue of a owl. <laughs> so funny. Another fun thing about Otomoe Road is that there are actually a lot of butler cafes or like boys love cafes. One of the famous ones is Ikegaku. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have seen some video on YouTube before. So basically you walk in and it's like a gakuin. So it's like academy, right? They can act out like scenarios that you want them to uh, perform. Yeah, so it's actually like a menu item. You can order that sort of stuff on the menu and then they act it out in front of you. It's really interesting. Okay, so this is your student card. Like I got two points for going. Yeah, we should go. <laughs> it, was, it was fun, we should go together. I really I, hope we can film over there. I really hope we can film in, in there one day. Okay, so you want to take the north exit when you get out of station here. Is there nothing on the south? There is a blowjob bar on the south, but the main attraction is going to be on the north. So you'll see here on the bottom right, that's where we can get Imagawa Yaki. So Imagawa Yaki is similar to Taiyaki, it's just like round and it's a little bit thicker. So this is a really good imagawayaki place. This is what it looks like. If you guys come to Nakano, I would totally suggest you come and try this out. It's just right in front of the station. I got cream cheese, so let's see what it... Mmm, so good. And they have a whole bunch of flavors. They have red bean, which is a traditional Japanese flavor, custard, cream cheese, sweet potato. They even have sausage with mayo. I really like the custard one and the red bean one, so those are the ones that I would recommend to try out. Okay, so after you grab your imagawayaki, head down through Sun Mall. So I think Sun Mall is uh, Shotengai, right? Yes. There are lots of like little shops here and there and offer different variety of goods as well. Yeah. So I actually used to live in Nakano, so I've been to a lot of the stores around here, and one of my favorite ones is this bakery right here. Now, what I would suggest you come and get here is a maple syrup melon pan. Melon pan is a famous sweet bun in Japan, but here they actually stick maple syrup inside, so it has an extra level of goodness. It's just really good. Try it out. Hi, everyone. So we're at Nakano Broadway. This is one of my favorite places in Tokyo because I'm such an anime fan. So everybody knows that Akihabara is the otaku heaven of Tokyo. And also Nakano Broadway is another very popular spot for otakus and anime fans as well. It is not as touristy as Akihabara. So I would highly recommend if you want some special experience, come to here and visit Nakano Broadway. So actually I have been to Nakano Broadway many times. It's very easy to get lost because there's so many shops over there. It's like a maze. It's good to have the information of your language. I love Nakano Broadway so much. It's so retro chic. What is retro chic? It's this throwback. They have like, in actually Japanese, they call it like Showa. So if something Showa has that sort of old school feel to it. And when you walk around here, you can just really feel that, like the history. I see, it's definitely not like other part of Tokyo, which people have the image of high tech everywhere. It does feel like a little bit more nostalgia that you see something in the 70s or 80s. It's really a good place to buy secondhand goods, which are no longer, you know, available in the market, new anymore. 
And one of the coolest things I think is you can actually get cells. So these are actually from real anime. Very cool. Okay, so let's talk about why we really recommend Nakano for gay people. Well, because lots of gay people live there. Yeah, exactly. So, right, you're going around in the back, so you can see all these bars here. Also, another example of Showa, retro chic. But, like, this is a prime place to open up your grinder. Didn't you tell me before that was a blowjob bar over there in Nakano? <laughs> so we're on the north exit at the moment, but yes, if you go to the south exit, you can find some fun things to do there too. Is there only one bar or there are uh, there? There's a blowjob bar and there's an actual uh, separate full bathhouse available on the south, south side. That's some new information. So if you're tired of like Shinjuku and Hatenba, definitely visit here. <laughs> So Ueno's gay area is actually second in size to Shinjuku Nichome, has about 100 bars, but it's rumored to actually be older than Nichome. I heard bears love to go to Ueno. Yeah, so it's known and famous for bears and older men, but I mean everyone's welcome, but that's, that's the main clientele. So if you're coming to Ueno, it's a good chance to check out Amayoko and Ueno Park. Amayoko is one of the only open markets in Tokyo, so it's kind of cool to check out. There's clothes, bags, cosmetics, fish, etc. It's really neat. Um, and you really like Ueno Park, right? I like Ueno Park. I just love nature in general. Yeah. And there's a zoo there. There's a zoo. I love zoos. So yeah, they... I love... And they have panda. I do know that they do have a panda, and the panda's on the news a lot. Yeah. yeah, what's her name? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you'll probably also pass this like sketchy cinema. Um, it's called Okura Cinema, it has a really interesting history. Um, up until the late 2000s, there was actually gay porn shown there. Um, so it used to be a good hookup spot, uh, but now it's only uh, straight porn. So, you know, it's not as popular anymore. So Ueno is a little bit more discreet than uh, Shinjuku, so a lot of these bars are kind of hidden. You can see this with the members only sign that they tend to have on doors. So the members only sign is basically a camouflage. It, it means this space is caters for gay customers to meet other gay people. So don't let these signs confuse you or push you away because if you're gay going to these places, you are a member and you are welcome to go in. So bars are actually a little bit hard to find. Um, we're gonna show you around in the daytime, but at nighttime it's gonna be totally different. Like it's gonna be very noisy and people drinking. Well, and hopefully Corona will be done by then as well. <laughs> so a lot of these bars that we're going to show you in this video are currently closed because we're in a state of emergency. Um, so they might look a little bit boring, but once you get inside, it'll be a little bit more exciting. Okay, we're in front of the infamous 24 <laughs> Kaika. 24 is most famous in Shinjuku Nichome, but there's another branch in Ueno. Actually, I didn't know there was 24 in Ueno until now. Yeah, the clientele at 24 in Ueno is just a little bit older, so it's just a different atmosphere. And also you mentioned there was a, a blowjob bar over there in Ueno. So this is the main gay area in Ueno, but actually on the southern side of the park there's another like mini gay area. They have a couple cool gay bars down there and actually around the corner from them um, is a blowjob bar. Upstairs. So no intercourse, just blowjobs. Just blowjobs. I see. Yeah. A good option for people who want to do vanilla. Yeah, it's very it's a very good <laughs> option when you want to do vanilla. It's something you could just swing by on the way back to the hotel. <laughs> Shimbashi is a popular spot among salarymen to come eat and drink after work. There are a lot of offices around this area. Tokyo Station, Yurakcho, Shinagawa. These are also very popular places um, that have lots of offices. Um, so if you're a businessman between 30 years old to 50 years old, it's a very popular spot to check out on a Friday night. So I know that Shinbashi is not actually as famous as Shinjuku Nichome, for instance, but it actually has quite a vibrant gay town. There's like 80 bars, so it's pretty big. 
I think Shinbashi is definitely more exclusive. Uh, unlike Shinjuku Nichome, they have more bars only cater to gay customers. And I think the really cool thing about that is it actually allows for really cool parties, right? Because there are only gay men going. Do you mean you can do more nasty stuff? Exactly. Tell us something about townhouse. I think we. I talked about townhouse already. Oh, we did. That video. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Every story you want to hear is there. Yeah. So this is where we went to Fundoshi night and we talked about it in our bathhouse video. Mm -hmm. So if you want more juicy stories about what happened there, you can check that out. Okay, so let's take you around and show you some bars. So do you know Shinbashi actually charge you for otoshi, which means like a table charge? An uh, entry fee. Essentially, yeah. It's just something to be aware of. I do find something can be very challenging for people first time visiting Tokyo where you don't understand Japanese. People in the bars usually don't speak English. Yeah, there are uh, definitely some bars that speak English, but I think the majority of them are Japanese only. Well, don't be discouraged because uh, even though the staff in the bars may don't offer English um, you know, services, but a lot of people working around this area speak English and work for like global companies as well. So depending on the day, you may meet someone who can speak English and have a very fun experience. All right, so we're at number one now, Shinjuku Nichome. I mean, haven't we been here a thousand, a million time already? <laughs> I don't know. This is like a second home to me. I love Nichome. So like, okay, people are gonna come here. What exactly are we gonna talk about? Do you think that people should stay around Shinjuku? Oh, well, I that think. Point, right? Okay, I think Shinjuku is a good place to stay. It's a very busy um, transportation hub. It's a big hub. It's the biggest hub in the world, yes. And Shinjuku offers the, the most lines, I believe, yeah. going to different places. So, and yeah, if you love shopping, if you love to explore, or, you know, gay district, everything is in Shinjuku, so why not? So the difficult thing about Shinjuku is it's huge. The station is massive. And if you get out, if you go out the wrong exit, you can get lost. Like, it's happened to so many of my friends. So I think the important thing here is to go to C7. That's your goal if you want to go to Nichome. Wait, C7 you mean on the subway? Yeah, well you can come in JR and mm. still go underground. Just follow the exit, C7. It'll take you pretty much the whole way underground. To Nichome, yeah, right? Yeah, from JR, from Metro, for any of that. You can, obviously, if you want the scenic route to go out. At that point, you want to choose the east exit. I see. And then you just walk straight down that road, right? So, yeah. foreigners coming here for the first time, where would you suggest they go to Nichome? Dragon or Arty Farty because it's more like a boring experience as well. Like maybe in your home country, it's how a gay bar look like. So if you're here just for one or two days and have a fun gay night, I would definitely recommend either uh, Dragon or Arty Farty. Definitely. Cool. I think Arty is good for people who like to dance. I think Arty and Dragon are very similar because you can dance in both. Okay, so for people who don't like to dance, where should they go? So I think Eagle's actually a really good place to go. Okay, so this is actually closed at the moment because we're in a state of emergency. But normally, every weekend, this is gonna be full of people. People are always lined in here as well. It's a total cool place to check out. Definitely check out Eagle if you come down to Michoma. And also Iroh in a sense, right? Iroh, yeah, that, that's super open and everyone's out on the street as well. You could just like walk by and get sort of like pulled in. The great thing about all these places as well is all of them speak English. Very international. Yep, and then you can actually go to Eagle Blue if you want as well. The thing I like about Eagle Blue is it's actually smoke free. So it's great. I can go in and I don't come out stinking. That's good to know because I lost up your hay smoke. What about other things like Mr. Tokyo? It's more like for Japanese crowds, right? Yeah. I mean, we at least have to speak Japanese, but I do yeah. think there are lots of hot guys. Hot guys, so that's the thing. That's why I wanted to include it on the list because I was thinking like, the guys are just so hot. I mm. think like, take the risk. Also, they play K-pops all the time. I'm a huge K-pop fan. So if you like to listen to K-pop while, you know, having some chat with hot guys, oh, Mr. Tokyo. So good, so good. <laughs> So 
so moving on, I think there are other things in Michome as well. Like you're gonna probably get hungry. So there's this like takoyaki place that I like. So we are here at a takoyaki place in Michome. I actually come here a lot when I'm out because I just, I love it. Definitely check it out if you're in Michome. Stop by, it's about 500 yen. There's a whole bunch of flavors. It's really good. How about the Vietnamese restaurant? I always go there. Vietnamese restaurant's good. There's a Thai restaurant that's really good, Chinese. There's a really famous dumpling place, actually, just on the main street. That's something definitely to check out. You'll know, actually, you've gone there because it's usually a massive line. And then what about stores? I always think that these stores are really interesting to, for like for tourists to check out. You mean the um, Goose and DVD shop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can find actually a lot of like gay magazines, like gay Japanese magazines there, right? With like the local Gogo -go boys, you know, they get on the, the cover and stuff like that. You can buy like, you know, the lube in like the, the camouflage, like tea bottles and I stuff. I didn't like, know that. You've never seen the, the ocha? They, they they make it look like it's ocha, but it's actually lube inside? I probably just didn't You probably, because he doesn't lo use lube as we already <laughs> 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 confirm. And then there's also, you can actually buy more circuit party, like, or, you know, like Andrew Christian underwear and stuff in Nichome as well. Although it's like not Japanese brand, it's mm. still kind of fun that you can go there and buy your, you know. It's gay town after all that you can buy all kind of like gay goods over yeah, there. So you yeah. can get everything. Walking around in and of itself is probably going to be an experience. Like even just going to like 7-Eleven, um, you know, Lawson, stuff like that. Grabbing some drinks, walking around. You may be approached by some hot guys on the street, oh, just, you know, nice. walking there and like maybe drinking on the street and people be like, oh, hi, hottie. Yeah, it, well, because in, in summer, everyone's out. Like in Japan, you can drink out on the street. And we are famous for being cheap gays that we really go to the bars, we just drink on the street. Time, <laughs> yeah, so. so you'll find us like in front of Lassen, Cafe Lassen, and you'll find us 7-Eleven, stuff like that, walking around. And then there's the famous Shine Mart. They have the best location in the center of Nichome. You can also go and like talk to people there because that's a very famous smoking spot. If you don't like smoke, I would avoid it. But if you don't mind smoking, you like smoking. That's also a good place to go to like loiter around and meet people. So there you have it. That was the top seven gay spots you should visit the next time you're in Tokyo. What did you think? Let us know in the comments below and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.